Sonic Talk. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sonic Talk episode, uh, gosh, what is it? 675. That's right, 675, recorded today live, the Wednesday, the 30th of June, the day after England actually managed to beat Germany in a competition <laughs> football, which most of you, I realise, are not going to be any interested, but uh, it's quite a big deal. It's been 55 years or somewhere like that since they've actually managed to do it. And even though it wasn't fantastic to watch, it's nice to celebrate, um, although I do feel a bit deflated because you know it, it wasn't a very good match if i'm perfectly honest but congratulations and if you're into that sort of thing you're probably feeling euphoric so i don't want to pop your balloon um so i just want to say uh hello and welcome to everybody uh, we've got all our friends over in the chat rooms uh actually that's the chat room isn't it youtube chat room where you can watch us where we're streaming live we've got the irc chat where you were streaming live we've also got uh Discord where we're streaming. I, d I decided not to stream the audio to Discord anymore because nobody was listening. So, you know, it's it's it didn't seem any point and it's a lot more technical setup. And I think my computer started to slow down a bit because it was trying to do too much, as sometimes happens. We want to say uh, you can get this podcast via all of those places, but also in a lot of places, if you're listening on audio, on Spotify, or on Stitcher, or on Google, you can ask your smart speaker to play the uh, Sonic Talk podcast and it will actually work. Uh, I can, I, well, it does for me anyway, so I hope it doesn't, it works for everybody else. I uh, want to say thank you very much to all of those people who subscribe and continue to. I also want to point out that uh, we also have a Patreon where this ad, this show goes up ad-free, uh, so you get the pre-show as well, uh, and that's all on our Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash Sonic State. Uh, we've got lots of exclusive stuff there too, not just uh, ad-free videos, but that is uh, available to all of your base subscribers. So uh, please do check that out. So we'll say hello to our guests as well, I think. Um, we'll start off with Mr... Hmm, let's go to Mr Matt Hodson, who's there in his highly equipped modular studio in hey. um, in the south of England. How are you, How Matt? You How are you doing? I'm good. I'm really good. Really good, thank you. Super busy with a lot of things at the minute. Um, releasing songs, doing live streams, um, Yes, you name it, repatching my synth. I, I released a track today uh, called Control, released that via Bandcamp, um, which is a 10 minute long, it's uh, no edits. There it uh, is. Performance, production. Oh, there it is. Lee, thanks for that. And uh, feedback's been really good for that. It's part of my releasing one track a month for the whole of this year. Um, so I'm really happy with that. So it's glad to have that out. And. Um, yeah, last night I did a what, about a one-hour live stream. One of the questions I get asked the most on the internet is, can we have a rig rundown of your modular system that you play live with? So I did that last night. I basically um, and there it I is. went through it. I'll post oh, the link oh, in the thanks. show notes oh, so it's all timed. Fun. Yeah, and uh, the usual lot were there, Inky and what have you from the usual chat room. So thanks for joining us. And Dom, Dom even popped in as well. And um, that was part one. So I'm going to do part two, which is I'm actually going to show it patched and go through some of the sound sets and, and that kind of thing. So um, super busy this end. But, yeah, nice to be back in, in uh, with you guys to chat all things production. Good. I'm glad to have you. Glad to have you. And we've also got uh, – well, in fact, this week we have – Art, all they're all artists from the extensively uh, featured Sonic 001 uh, album, which is available now. 18 tracks of goodness, and all of our guests this week uh, contributed tracks. Uh, so we'll come over to Mr. Matt. Sorry, Mr. Dominic Hawker, aka okay? Mr. Wiggly. Matt Hawker. I know we look alike. It's uh, yeah. back to whack a mole again, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> Your track Heartbeat was there. How are you, Dom? You well? I'm really good. Thank you very much. Yeah, I dropped in. I've been rewiring. I, I, I've been running a stream on Sundays for anyone that's interested around about seven o'clock. And it's turned, it was going to be another synth show, but it's turned into a kind of variety performance, just chatting a little bit about synths. And then my daughter does a quiz show on it, which is just mad. It's like, um, what colour are my shoes? That kind of question. Oh, what, what have I got in um, my pockets? Yeah, exactly. What's and the, she did. A, who came for a play date? My two cousins came for a play date yesterday. What were their names? And Ty got them right. It was like he was really spooky. Ty came on and watched it, and it was like Olivia and Alex. And he said, "Oh, Olivia and Alex," and it was absolutely dead right. It was like one of those uh, spooky moments. Anyway, because Whoa. of that, um, and you're very welcome to watch it. Anyway, it's um, it's quite entertaining. I hope. Um, 
I started a rewire because I'd set her up with a with a microphone, which turned in from turned from plugging a microphone into kind of rewiring everything, the usual stuff. So I've had streams on in the background while I've been on my knees under the desk, kind of sorting out all the new plugs and stuff, which has been really good. So I watched Matt's, which was great, really insight into how modular works. Um, but I've got a big up Yoads. I know Yoads is about to be introduced, I think, but Yoads. Uh, video that you put out this week for how he made his Sonic State 001 track is epic. So anyone who hasn't seen that, it's, it starts off saying, well, it's really simple, really. It was just a demo. And then it takes you through these kind of tricks and techniques, which are, I suppose, simple if you know them, but they're absolutely epic, um, brilliant way. There, there's two videos really from Sonic State that you should watch if you want to make kind of hit pop come kind of cutting edge stuff one is that one because the stuff in there is just golden and the other one is the interview you did with frederico Vin vinfa yeah is Federico that Vinfer. um that's got like two thousand views on it it should have two hundred thousand views this guy is an amazing producer he works with kanye um just a whole bunch of amazing people um and he's a sonic state fan and he gives away some real insights and secrets into how he works one of which is like uh no more than four sounds at once and he's a massive nick fan i mean it's, it's brilliant and i think <laughs> it's just slips under the radar this video literally two thousand views but search it's Frederica. very interesting well th uh, that thank you dom that's very kind of you to plug those things i mean it's actually it's really interesting interviews generally while they're great to do they generally just don't get as much traffic as kind of you know cat on a synthesizer or cat or a cork you know or a new a new synth review it's really interesting that and that's not just on this channel that's on lots of people's channel but you know that it, it's i i have to say though um going to our next guest who is mr yoad nevo uh, the subject of our last video which uh, uh dom very kindly plugged um that's yes, doing thank really you well. so much dom it's brilliant yeah though. it's I'm absolutely well, brilliant. i just subscribed resubscribed my waves plugins on the basis of that video <laughs> just amazing dusted them all off epic and it's not i'm not this is not an advert for waves it was just like you do what with that yeah what? some really Hang good on, tips in know, there really clever really clever well, well Sorry, yeah, like, oh, so yeah i know you've been very busy you've been mixing uh yeah and of course producer mixer songwriter uh his track was called waiting for you uh which was with nina smith the vocalist and some really interesting insights into that on the actual on the the piece that we were talking about how are you have you been uh, busy busy yeah very busy um mixing a lot but i'm also installing a um, dolby atmos system here so it's quite an operation uh plans and things um so i'm gonna replace my current uh five one system with a 7.1.4 um so that's gonna be oh, that's nice does that have height as well as so you've got top and bottom? Yeah, yeah, you have well. four, four speakers on the four speakers on the ceiling, and seven satellites and a sub. Blimey! Wow, yeah, yeah. this out of interest. Is this because of the um, you know the recent move with Apple now doing uh, the, bringing the Dolby Atmos move, into it? Yeah, the recent move that Apple uh, announced is basically yeah. part of a trend that's been going on for several years and um and since at waves we're working with the uh, immersive and you know we have the nx which is immersive for for headphones um uh, and surround plugins and all that um then i just um i just needed a good system here and of um, course it's an allowable business expense <laughs> yeah well everything around me is it falls <laughs> under this category but it's still a lot of money to spend yeah so uh, this is interesting because so because lots of people are now i mean you know at once uh, um, this wasn't really a topic but i think it's worth discussing because uh once again apple are very good at kind of identifying something that people are using and representing it in a way that kind of makes them somehow seem associated or responsible for it because atmos has been around for quite a, a few years now and it's mm -hmm. just yeah. it's obviously uh, and as far as i understand it it's got it's rather than uh, panning stuff around in the main channels you've got these kind of there's a matrix of sub channels which allows you to create these kind of virtual spaces that are much much more I specific yeah, I mean, I can get into that if you like, but uh, maybe now is not the time. No, I'm just uh, but, but in theory, in theory, yeah, you have you have your bed speakers, your bed channels, basically, and then you have your objects, and the objects can be 
uh, spread around um, all 130 channels, of yeah. which 10 yeah. are the bed and 120 are the kind of... Um, and then you can automate it from within your host um, and it will... It's, it's a really brilliant format because it allows you to, to work in the highest resolution and to bounce at the highest resolution. In fact, the, the file that you get at the end, the, the ADM um, Atmos Dolby Master, which I'm sure you can understand why they didn't call it Dolby Atmos Master. Um, right. <laughs> Uh, so, um, so, so that keeps your basically your 130 channels or WAVs with the respective um, metadata. So it's all the automation and how they behave in space. The thing is that you can monitor this either with like 64 speakers on the ceiling and things like that, or with a 7.1.4. So you have four. So all this movement in space is rooted to 12 speakers, basically. Right, Or 2.1, or mono, or binaural. So but you can I, actually... And I guess I guess yeah. the big thing, the, one of the big reasons why there's, it makes sense for, for more music studios to do this, because, because uh, Apple have kind of adopted it and b baked into their new high-resolution audio, it means that Mon loads more record companies can either remaster their stuff in Atmos. There's lots more mixes coming along because it's it's like a because there was d there were lots of DVDs that were done in surround, but I don't know if it really kind of took off as much as this seems to. Well, they're uh, going to be putting yeah, it straight I mean, into Logic, uh, aren't they? Sorry, they're going to be. Are they not? I believe they're put going to be putting it straight into Logic. So for people at home with yeah, Logic, some, you're going to be able some... to export stuff with that. Right. Mm -hmm. There's some support in in Pro Tools as well, but um, it it seems like the the kind of uh, support will be wider or deeper in in logic uh, because it's apple um but yeah i mean netflix and amazon prime only accept uh, dolby atmos masters you know so so there's a lot of content that has to be created in that not to mention music and the key here is the ability to to to, to experience it on headphones right with Stuff like, by, you know, binaural and, um, I mean, binaural um, techniques like NX. Um, uh, 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 because surround, you know, to, to, for someone to install seven speaker yeah, speakers sure. in their homes and power them and all that, that's, that's always been a big obstacle. But now, with the technology that allows us to experience some of the 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 essence of the experience in um, over headphones that's that's the main thing here and obviously it's it's another opportunity for all the labels to remaster and yeah, re quite. sell the, re -monetize. the yeah mm -hmm. exactly yeah interesting <laughs> stick a bit of delay on the ceiling like they used to do with the five one mixes take anything you want chuck a bit of delay out the ears and then uh, sell it again not that that is what yo ad and the team are going to do but there was some uh, pretty cutthroat snake oil salesmen before that did it when the last thing happened can i just ask one question without getting too techy so are you mixing effectively to 130 odd channels and then they are being Dolby Atmos to come out of as, as many speakers as you have. So technically, yeah, that's, Dolby Atmos supports up to 130 odd speakers if you wanted to go that far. Absolutely, absolutely. Not wow, only that, wow. your file, your master will be saved in that manner until you open it. So you can open it at any time and render yeah. or yeah. or monitor at any other config in any other configuration. Super future. But that's the yeah. that's the full resolution. Brilliant. And so also, if you've got VR headset on completely, you, that format is just way over specced at the moment for future because you're not going to fit 140 speakers to your house just yet until they <laughs> invent some wallpaper that you can just paste up that has <laughs> built in ones or whatever. That's just phenomenal. Um, Amazing. Uh, you know, for, for, for music, you don't need such localization as mm -hmm. much as, you know, sound to picture when you need the chopper to be right there yeah. or something yeah. like that, you know? So for music, you, you're not gonna have that much movement and the movement makes it, make the, makes the effect more Distracting, apparent. yeah, I mean, it'd be distracting in music as well. It, depending on the, on the use, yeah. Right. 
for music, you would, but imagine the, the headroom and the space you have. Mm. Because instead of squeezing everything into two speakers, you now have so many. Um, and that applies to, to surround, to 5.1, and that's the one, one of the things that I always enjoyed about um, working in surround, because you have so much headroom, and here you have even more. So um, it, it's, it's a nice way of, uh, of working. Thank you, Rodney. Fabulous. That'll go to a drink when we next time, uh, next time we're, um, we're all together. Um, oh, yes. Well, the, I mean, it's absolutely fascinating. I mean, I'm sure we could do a special on this. And as Andy post, posted in the chat room and YouTube, uh, we've got a, a local guy, Steve Evans. He's po putting an Atmos system in his studio. So we might kind of, uh, and I think some stuff has been filmed in that. So we'll, we'll find out, uh, not filmed in at, but about it. So we'll have some more of that stuff going on. Um, I guess we could probably um, think about a topic. And what should we start with? Uh, ah, well, let's, let's get synthy, shall we? Uh, and we'll start with um, this. Actually, it's 20 past. What I should probably do, if I was being professional, and, I'm, and I haven't been, I, is um, have a word from our sponsors, because <laughs> then we won't, uh, we won't push it all to the end of the show. Let's have a word from our friends over at Isotope. Isotope Producers Club is a one-of-a-kind membership for producers ready to take their tracks to the next level. Once you join, you'll gain access to powerhouse Isotope plugins and a curated selection of tools from our partners, such as Melodyne from Celimony. Plus, as long as you're a member, you'll get every future update to the Isotope plugins in your membership for no extra cost. We'll also regularly serve you new curated content like exclusive inspiration-sparking sample packs and preset packs and industry-leading training ranging from our own tutorials to vocal production lessons from the world-renowned Berkeley Online, taught by Grammy-winning producer and engineer, Prince Charles Alexander. With new content being added every month full of valuable production techniques, tips and tricks, and solutions to common production problems, becoming a member is an investment in your career that grows as you and your career do. For more information on Isotope Producers Club, head to isotope.com. And of course, uh, you could also save yourself 10% uh, by heading over to isotope.com forward slash sonic talk and uh, using the code sonic10, which will save you 10% at checkout on all of their software products, uh, though obviously not subscriptions, but uh, well worth doing as well. And we thank them for their support uh, of the sonic talk. Right, let's get into the first uh, topic of uh, the first scheduled topic, I think. So this is a picture. This is the... Um, Prophet 600, which is, I think it was Gleegly who was who did some amazing mods to it. I think we've, he, he takes the, the top off and he's put this little teensy board in it, which has completely upgraded the MIDI and the resolution of the controls. I mean, it's a fairly hardcore mod, but uh, this was really to do with the fact uh, that we've got a load of uh, these listed. Uh, our excellent reporter, MIDI Era, did a whole... Uh, a, wraith, a whole swathe of uh, hardware and software mods that are available for various synths. And it's proved actually a very popular article. And I put it in as a sort of just general kind of, has anyone got mods? And everyone is, yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> so there are people with plenty of mods going on there. I don't know. Um, Matt, does the... Do, have you got anything modded at your end? I mean, because I guess with in the modular world, it sort of almost feels like you, you should have to to be a proper modular user. Gonna, you have to mod your, you have to mod your stuff, right? Yeah, I was going to kind of say this. It's kind of goes hand in hand with with this kind of stuff. I mean, I even do things like I order these coloured dials from um, Thonk, which is a, a Brighton based company actually, um, and you can buy dials from them. You can buy components. You can buy modules and build them. Um, but I find color coding dials really, really useful, particularly when you're playing live. You know, your kick drums on this one, your bass is on that one. Other, other than that, um, I did once mod my 808. I remember drilling a hole inside of it and putting MIDI on it, and I did a MIDI retrofit, which was pretty straightforward, but pretty scary at the time. It was the kind of first mod that I did. Um, but no, other than that, I mean, I guess off the back of modding stuff, one thing I was just going to say is that it's it's really easy to work with manufacturers these days if if you've got, say, firmware mod ideas, yeah. so not hardware stuff. But, you know, for a lot of the, some of the sequences that I use, like the um, Nerd Sequencer, which is a, like a tracker sequencer, um, 
you know, being able to send stuff straight to these companies nowadays and just saying, you know, it'd be really cool if it did this and they implement it, send you a beta and you try it out. I know it's not hardware, I'm taking it off subject a little bit, but I thought that's quite relevant just to say how we're living in an age now, it's really easy to reach out to manufacturers, yeah. uh, particularly with software and for them to implement new ideas and things like that. Absolutely. Um, I mean, the, 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 just these little boards, this, this Teensy board here, you know, which is yeah. these kind of microprocessors, which are probably infinitely more powerful than the ones that are in. In fact, there's a Teensy, as far as I gather, because when you update the firmware in, the, in this uh, uh, Conductive Labs MRCC, it uses a Teensy thing. So there must be a Teensy in there running the whole show, which is astonishing. Uh, uh, Dom, you've got some modular and, you know, you've been in the biz for a while. Have you got anything modded? You, yeah, well, I, loads. loads. Oh, have I you? mean, it, it is, it's much easier nowadays to do that with things like the Arduino and now the Teensy. The Teensy is, um, is it runs saying that you can program it in C++ and stuff, but it runs the same processing system as the Arduino, uh, but gives you digital audio if you want it. I've built MIDI switches out of Teensies. They kind of just work out of the box with very, very little coding. And there's so many example code about. So I had with my modular thing, um, if I drove it from my deluge, uh, deluge would send a play command out via MIDI to everything that was connected to it. So doorless I mean, whether it was modular, ah. I had a drum machine, everything would start, which, which wasn't really want. what I wanted to happen. I kind of wanted to start and stop stuff. But when you do that, it would, would the MIDI clock wasn't um, knocking it to the nearest bar. It would, it would start sort of in the middle of the bar as soon as you hit the play button. So I, I built a, a big red button that started and stopped the MIDI clock and it just filtered the MIDI clock out. But when you started it, it would knock it to the nearest beat so that it would just come back in on time. And this was, was revolutionary because I think I've got the uh, Mother 32. You, you, you can't stop that thing from firing off when you send it a, a, a start command. Um, but I was going to say, uh, the guy called Murray from Kiwitronics was one of the first guys I came across doing that stuff seriously. And he reverse engineered the firmware in the JX3P then rewrote it the way it kind of should have been done with loads of extra functionality, um, blew it onto a chip and started selling these kits. Well, not kits, really. So you had to install it yourself, but selling these boards to plug in. And it just turned it into the most epic synth. Kept the same oscillators, kept the same filters physically, um, and started his own company. There you go. So he's yeah. got, I've got a Juno 106, two JX3Ps, and a JX8P, all with Kiwi mods in, that I've kind of amassed over the time. I bought a you know, broken. The beautiful thing is that if you buy a broken JX3P, you can replace the firmware and the board inside with a Kiwi. So I was listening to Kent Spong, the amazing um, synth repair guy who just repairs all uh, everything, all of all of um, Thai stuff, like everything, um, and he was just saying it revolutionised that because you didn't actually have to buy the original components anymore. You've still uh -huh. got to find the operator chips and stuff, mm. but stick a Kiwi board and it, it comes back better. And then it got so far that I've uh, he built. I've got one of these, um, which is a Kiwi patch editor that supports the mods in all the synths, so you can select. Wow. JX3P, MKS80, MKS70, all this stuff, um, and this is this is quite old. You know, this is way before you could start doing it in um, in OSC or any on, on an iPad and stuff. So suddenly, because I'm a bit of a Roland fan, by all these synths I had in racks and stuff could be edited from that one little thing, and it's just just changed the market really. Nowadays, it is easier because. Um, you know, reverse engineering the firmware in a JX3P by looking at a stream of ones and noughts is way beyond most people's ability, I'm sure. Um, but you can simply go in and start replacing it completely with something like a Teensy that says, well, I know I know this, this is a call to make the oscillator fire off and this is a call to set the voltage in the filter, you know, and you can do that kind of stuff really easily. Um, so, yeah, I would, anyone who's afraid of electronics, just go and Google Teensy and just look at say a, a Teensy MIDI interface or something like that and you have to buy like three components you don't even need a soldering iron these days because so USB powered isn't it you could, yeah, you could just... USB powered I used one <laughs> my own attempt <laughs> it's not completely successful I have a Revox tape machine just it's up here just off screen that I use for delay so the usual old school thing where they've got a playhead and a record head so you can you can literally run a single a signal through it into record on the tape and then listen back off the playhead and the, you'll get a delayed signal and the delay 
is based around how the how you how fast the tape's going yeah. on. And it happens to have a vary speed, so you can speed it up and down. So I decided when I had far too much time on my hands to build a MIDI clock interface to my Revox so that it would just automatically set the delay from the tempo that I had in Logic, which actually worked. So I, I put a TNT in there and it was clocking. But it made the, the motor engine overheat, so it burnt out in the end because it was oh. constantly just going. But for a little right. while, I was really chuffed. So, you know, <laughs> one of those things. <laughs> yeah, well, and I suspect work. this sort of stuff is very dangerous. I know you're an arch tweaker. Do you think you could, you, if, if a teensy dropped on the front mat of your, uh, your Amazon uh, um, delivery port, do you think you might suddenly find yourself going, hmm, or um, you try and keep away? It will definitely get into my to-do list, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is very long. Um, yeah, I, I love uh, Kiwi. I have a few synths with, uh, with the, the mod. I have the Poly 6, uh, Juno 106, JX3P, uh, and I have a JX10, Super JX, which has another mod which gives it um, pulse width. Um, yeah, um, which is really nice. And I have a few other, I have the Poly 800, which I love, uh, modded as well. So you can, and it has a data entry, which is not related to the sound, but it actually makes everything so much easier because otherwise you have to just, you have plus and ah, minus. So, you, so you put, you put a, um, you put an actual, uh, rotary pot on there to give you values yeah not uh, not myself good... but the the person who, who who did this mod and and a bit of fm and input to the into the course delay uh, and stuff like that um uh, and the cutoff and resonance are on knobs because it's analog so you just extended the um you know the actual analog component um so yeah, I mean, I have done a few silly things uh, in the past involving a uh, soldier. But, uh... <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I mean, I'd be tempted. But I mean, the one thing I really like the look of in this list was the U-Tree Magic uh, MS-20 mod, which kind of, I mean, is a bit destructive. Uh, I might well try it on a, uh, one of the newer ones, uh, right? because I've got a proper old one. I don't really fancy chopping that up. But to give, you get ring mod, get pulse width modulation, you get uh, pitch. Ver I mean, essentially, it turns the, it's the mod that, that I think Korg must have kind of gone, yeah, uh, let's do that when they did the MS-20 desktop, which I know I keep banging on about. I think that's the one synth that I would really like to have because it's just it makes you get the MS20 sound but you get those things that make that make a synth the synth in sort of more modern terms and, and I think these are the sort of mod but that would that be a more destructive physical one I'll post that in the in the show notes if anybody's interested in that but it's not I don't know maybe maybe people would be uh, it feels like sometimes you just think mm, I don't know if I want to I want to go there it's, t it's a bit scary because it might destroy you know leave it to the experts yeah. perhaps um, I do uh, I do a lot of stuff um, to guitars, so I like to to you know to improve them uh, or you know get them to how I like them to to be. Sometimes right. it's a simple process, and sometimes it's a little bit more complicated. By but I'm I feel more comfortable in that because um, when something it's physical, you know, when something goes wrong, you can repair it or patch it whereas with electronics um you can break it there's yeah. too much guesswork for me yeah uh, well i have uh, no i mean i think i i think that you don't probably have a get, got a bit more uh, a bit more expertise there but it's i a, have an oscilloscope to, to, yeah, to try and work my way back but i also have a broken jx 8p next to it so horses <laughs> for courses right, right. fair enough <laughs> yeah but you yeah, have to be careful it's a great article though well worth uh, checking out uh, and uh, what I, I remember i did say i would i would plug this actually there's a uh, um if you're interested uh pro synth network on a friday at seven o'clock UK time. I've got a live uh, stream with uh, JJ Jagalit, who is uh, one of the uh, great, one of the early sort of digital and keyboard and Fairlights uh, session guys who was responsible, you know, part of the art of noise and stuff. Should be a really interesting one. That's uh, failed muso Rob per Pericelli. Should probably uh, check that out. So um, Friday at seven o'clock. In fact, every Friday at seven o'clock. And they need some more subscribers as well. So. It, 
underrated show. Um, okay, right, let's get on to, um, let me see what was next. Uh... Hmm, I'm kind of not sure which one to do next, whether to go... I think we'll go for um, this this guy, because this is kind of interesting as well. So this is just a video of... It's the new Touch OS, which was one of the earliest touchscreen kind of control systems, along with maybe MIDI Designer. I uh, use OSC, but also works with MIDI as well. And the new version has been sort of rewritten from the ground up, because that's nearly 10 years old now. And it gives you, uh, there's scripting, there's all kinds of stuff that you could do. This will work on Android, iOS, uh, desktop, Mac PC, Linux. And it's this, again, this notion of being able to create these custom uh, control services, which I know many people, they're becoming a lot more prevalent, they're, especially in sort of video world where people need to switch certain things and create custom workflows. Just an incredibly useful thing. I mean, this is, doesn't really go into any of the details, but this is the Hexler uh, Touch OS. Let me see if I can find the... Uh, yeah, there's the web page that goes with it. So uh, if you check, it's, it's like a tenor, and it allows you to, to create lots and lots of really complex processing and whatnot. I guess this kind of almost comes into the same token, the, the same scope as, as what we're doing with, you know, what we're talking about with mods. I know, Matt, I, I mean, I know you use hardware MIDI controllers, do you mm. ever consider going the software route just because it's so much more flexible, or does it... Uh... Yeah, yeah, I do, and I, I'm a big fan of Touch OAC. Um, when, when I first started using Ableton many years ago, um, I was looking for a decent controller for it that would do all the things that I wanted to, and really the Touch OAC jumped out at me because it allowed me to completely design the interface from scratch, and I had an old iPad lying around, and... Um, I remember it being a little bit, oh, it was just a little bit cumbersome to put stuff together. I don't know what it was. I, I, it might have been, it was just a bit finicky to get things working 100% right. correct. I think some of the connection issues, it wasn't as stable as some of the apps are now. So I'm really happy to see that this has been, looks like it's been redeveloped from the ground up and there's a lot more that you can do with it. Um, so yeah, to totally into using software for, um, for working with uh, interfaces with, with software. Um, particularly just like sometimes, you know, you're looking for that inspiration and you could just build something like this, assign it to random pattern, random parts on a synthesizer or um, in a drum machine or something like that, tweak away, just record everything you do, cut it up and then make it into a, a sample pack or something like that, you know. So um, sometimes I use these machines not just for making music but sometimes i'll have those days like i think we all do when we get into the studio where we're not feeling that creative we don't want, want to write music we want to maybe just generate some sounds that we can use later on so i'll, I'll have a bit of a sound designing session and uh, that's mainly when i'll use these kind of things for basically right well, then, I mean, we use, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm effectively using hardware to do this now, but certainly over uh, over there, we use MIDI Designer Pro, or MIDI Designer or MIDI Designer Pro, our like early issue. Um, and that, that's running on a first generation. In fact, it was one of the first iPads to come into the UK because my mate bought it in the States when they were released. And it still runs, and I use it to switch cameras and, and run the kind of the review side of things when I'm over there, and it just runs on an iPad. And so these things can be incredibly useful when you design something that that you know you use over and over again. It, and you know, I think with Touch OSC and particularly with what they've done here, I mean, I, I I've not used it, but I think the fact that you can put logic and scripting in it means that they're going to be able to do all sorts of interesting things alongside just the regular stuff. Yeah, uh, but are you? Are you maybe concerned though? I mean, you're running that old iPad there. It's all set up. You know it works. You get, you arrive at your studio, you turn it on, and fingers crossed it, it works nine times out of ten. Are you worried though if you updated that iPad, then maybe some of the scripting might get broken, some of the software needs to be updated? Is there any concerns like that though that you take not, into consideration? Not with that one because it can't be updated any further than, you know, it's, it's right. so old that it won't go any further than it's already okay. gone. I mean, if it broke, I would have trouble um recreating what i've done but that's what you know that's what this is for you know i would just use this instead but it's in some ways for a live switch on a on a review it's kind of a bit too complicated i just need we just need big buttons camera one camera two camera three you know it's just so it depends but they're very easy to do i don't know um mm. yeah have you because uh, you're a big fan of uh, the logic control uh, of the logic 
uh, environment. I mean, essentially, isn't that the same sort of thing that you're doing, but within the in logic? Have you thought about maybe taking it outside of that to create a touch-based interface? Um, you know, in my work um, for Waves, we we develop workflows and user interfaces and controlling software and all that all the time. So so my desire for this kind of fiddly stuff is fulfilled on a daily basis. <laughs> right. So I don't feel the urge to, to get myself into another kind of menu diving um, sort of journey. Um, but also, um, when it comes to performance, my instrument is is the guitar, so I feel at home. Like you know, what I mean, it, yeah. if I had to choose, it would be playing guitar rather than doing that. I like doing all that, but not to the kind of extent of making it into a performance. Right, I see. Uh, what you're tool. If you know what I mean. I see what you're saying. So, I mean, it's interesting though, Dom, isn't it? Because, I mean, you know, all of this configuration stuff is extremely useful. I mean, the, th the thing that, uh, you know, it re really works for things like switching videos and whatnot, which are kind of, yeah. they're not necessarily, they are creative, but they're, they're kind of fixed. There's no, you're not getting into the flow. You're not kind of feeling the knob, you know, or the, the switch or the, the tactile side of yeah. things. And I suppose that's one thing that's missing from, uh, from any touch surface interface is that your physical relationship with it and getting into it actually might make it not work properly because you're you're too in you're, you're not accurate yep. enough yep there is that i mean touch osc allows you to forward controllers through it so you could for example i mean could probably have to rewind very slightly um the, the, the touch OC coming out is a brilliant thing because it is about 10 years old. It's it's annoying for me because I actually started putting together a new version because <laughs> I really wanted something like it and it was so out of date. I thought someone's given up, you know, and I tried to get source code and then I thought, right, I'm just going to start writing my own kind of thing, maybe open source it and everyone can join in. And then they put it out after about a month of, uh, of messing <laughs> around dear. quite recently, which is, which is brilliant because it's so much better and, and more advanced than I could have done. And it makes me understand why they didn't want to give away the source code as well which is fair enough um midi as it stands is is relatively simple and create using touch osc to create midi interfaces is a relatively simple concept and, and it's the osc side where it really excels um osc is another format like midi it's not midi it is kind of midi on steroids uh, it is the format for example that uh, the iPad remote for Logic, which is Apple's own proper remote for Logic, uses OSC. Um, what it does is allows you to target specific controls. So you don't particularly have channels you have to switch to. You can say, when I move this slider, I want this slider on this plugin, on this channel, in the middle of nowhere to move, you know, and if I move that plug in somewhere else, I, I want it to follow it around, you know, so yeah. it's, it's a lot more targeted and clever in the way that it can be done. And this new version adds scripting. So there are things within OSC, kind of similar to MIDI, MIDI as well, which will say, send me all your current settings. So you can call a plugin and go, just give me everything and your, um, your front end will immediately map to it. Um, or you could say, for example, you know, when I receive this particular slider control over here, send off five different sliders over here and switch my kettle on or something, or whatever it might be. You know, you can set up all these triggers going on. So OSC would allow you to take a MIDI controller um, and map sliders and faders through it to do stuff on screen, either via MIDI or OSC or, or right, both. Okay. So you could have that tactile really tactile on steroids again to be honest um and it is a, it's a really really great thing the way it works i would just say a plug for this thing which i'm really loving at the moment so much so that it's got finger marks all over it um this this is the electro one it was on the show ah uh, yes oh you got it a while ago cool and um, they had some um, some production problems initially, but it is out. I, I think they might be out of stock again at the moment. I don't know if the, com the component shortage is affecting them. This latest release allows you to run scripts on it, which is epic, really. So this has, it's the only other thing I know that allows you to basically go in and say, 
when I twist this knob like I would do on OSC, rather than I just want to send this information, I want to fire off a bunch of stuff that I want to write in little bits of code. And I'm, I'm sorry okay. to go on about code. It turns out I've got like a tech head every time I come on here, but that is a real game changer. So one of those in conjunction with OSC makes a, makes a, mm. a massive difference to the whole thing. So I, I think as a, as a format, as a, um, you know, as a, uh, like MIDI as a format, OSC is a very underutilized thing. Like, yeah. and they use it quite a lot on stage and so forth. But it's a really, really cool thing. And OSC in itself being 10 quid on, I think it's only, you only pay for the iPad and, and um, uh, iPhone versions. I think if you're using it on your screen or whatever, it's completely free. And they're, they're making available lots and lots of people's own implementations of front ends and stuff. So I can just see it getting bigger and bigger. And I'm so pleased outside of my own commercial experience that someone's picked it back up and gone, right, we're actually going to bring it. this into 2021 and, and make it a real thing. And I, 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 everyone should take a look at it. Don't let the tech side put you off. Um, well, I guess the thing if, is, if you can program it, if you can run it on desktop as well, it means you don't have to sit there on your yeah, phone doing it. You yeah, can and they're all compatible. So you can squirt it off the desktop onto your iPhone. And the fiddly, it is fiddly, but it's the kind of fiddly stuff that you only have to do once and then your workflow really really improved so you know if you want a, a way that in the way that you can set up multiple racks in in ableton to say you know turning this knob i want you to fire up this filter and turn the resonance up over here mm. and turn the reverb up over there all that stuff or live streaming as well you know i want to be able to turn this knob and switch the, the video camera and at the same time fire off this sound effect or i mean it works yes. yeah kind of across the well, board that's, that's essentially what this this controller is doing here that you know yeah it, it's I, just that i guess that's that's what it comes down to, isn't it? It's, it? It comes down to what the user is going to use this for and a desire. Because some music producers will be looking at scripting and think, "What? Well, I'm not. This isn't me," you know. Whereas others see it and they think, "Oh, what? What can I generate and use with this?" And um, I mean, if you took a look at uh, there's now scripting in Logic. It's been there for a while, and I was really excited to see that happen. And um, I don't know, every now and then I have a look on the web and there's quite a few websites popping up, people sharing scripts and ideas that they're doing in Logic, doing things like note repeats and playing around with pitches and, you know, firing off messages all over the place. And, um, yeah, it just seems these sort of things just seem to latch onto a certain scene yeah. or people or a desire agree, either yeah. as a musician or as a technologist and it, it seems to be, sorry it seems to be a lot of this yeah. stuff is is being pioneered by media composers who who spend a lot of time on their workflow because when they're composing they don't want any friction they just want it to work exactly so yeah. and that's what we've we've got a piece just coming up with uh, scripting in reaper and that's driven very much by uh, media composers who want certain things to happen uh, i'm just going to interrupt here with a little uh, mention of our friends over at cobalt uh, and modal this is the Cobalt 8, 8 voice extended at virtual analog synth uh, with an innovative oscillator with 34, actually more now with the version 2 uh, firmware. Uh, morphable 4 pole ladder filter, 29 endless encoders for real time control. Looks beautiful as well. That's one of the most prettiest synths I think around. Uh, internal sequencer and arpeggio, MP support for expression, and a modal app for Mac, Windows, iOS, Android, and VST3. AU. Do check it out. Go to uh, bit.ly slash get underscore modal for more information on that. We thank them very much for their support. Um, gosh, uh, it's we have got quite nerdy this week and it's quite, I'm, I'm kind of into, I think, I think the, the, the thing about this stuff is it, this is going to suit all of those those people who do that. I think with music production, it's slightly different because if you're working with third parties in the room, then your workflow and their workflow won't necessarily fit together. Whereas if you're a media composer and you're just like, right, I need, it's right here. My thing is here. When I press this button, it wants to do everything I need it to do. It really makes sense to have all this kind of stuff like nailed down because then you're investing in your workflow. The same way that you were talking, yeah, I mean, you've done the same thing with you know, the hours and hours and hours you've put in on the environment control of your synthesizer. So you can control of all of those things from mm -hmm. your position in front of the speakers while you're working on music and mixes. So, I mean, it, it just, it's the same kind of thing, I guess. Yeah, but uh, like Matt said, you have to, to be of a certain, yeah. you know, character. Uh, and it has to be, there has to be some kind of nerdiness in that. I think that guitarists are usually you know with all the stomp pedals and how to connect the the jack from here and to jump the you know the jcm 800 and all those things it's <laughs> kind of 
uh, it comes with the territory, really. Oh, right, um, okay, interesting. Yeah, so maybe it stems from that. Well, I suppose I could see a point where, you know, you, you buy the iOSC and just download a template and it does what you want. You don't care too much. It's yeah. like, I've got one of those things. All I need to do is put it on here and, and mm. connect the MIDI. That's, the, that's as far as I want to go, you know, and that's fine. You know, I suppose that, that will work as well. I mean, maybe that's, that will be an enabler for this new version of Touch OSC that, that means totally. that people... People with, uh, okay, um, uh, some sad news this week as well. Um, obviously, uh, we've we lost Peter Zinoviev, uh, who <coughs> is one of you know the the UK's kind of synthesis legends. Not only you know his early involvement with all the EMS stuff, but he was a, a lot of people don't necessarily know that he was also one of the pioneering um, computer music um, guys as well. He did he built a lot of his own equipment, a lot of digital. Uh, music production techniques and, and digital control was was his domain. He did loads and loads of work there, and so he passed away at a, a grand old age. But also, um, Manfred Fricker of uh, MFB, another another sad thing. MFB stuff is very. It, it, I mean, the, the 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 amount of work and the amount of influence he had on the kind of burgeoning Berlin school and techno scene in Berlin from his instruments. I mean, I've got a Dominion one which I love. I know lots of other people have got MFB stuff. I know. I mean. Not many of us have got uh, uh, EMS. There, you have you, Johan, Have you got any EMS stuff or any MFB no. stuff? I have some uh, MFB stuff, and I really like it. I have um, it's like a Minimoog sort of uh, spec, um, Eurorack in Eurorack format, and it sounds really punchy. So it's three oscillators and and a filter and two envelopes and everything, um, and I have a few envelopes I think um, but yeah I really like it it's the, the sound the Dominion is amazing at some point I will have to get my hand on one and my hands on one because it sounds so solid it has something a little bit that reminds me of the SH in the SH 101 in its kind of being really solid and you know uh, the the MFB the Dominion has a similar steadiness, but it's a little bit more metallic and mm. you it's know very punchy. flexible. It's got, yeah, so, it's so, got good. so much. So, yeah, I mean yeah. he's great, a great guy. I never I never met him. He was very shy. We we, we always used to deal with. Uh, uh, I try to remember what his name was. He was the um, the the guy the front guy for the MFB stuff. Uh, Oh, Uwe, Uwe George. Yeah, he was the guy, and he was like this sort of proper Berlin techno guy. I know, I'm, I'm guessing you might have uh, come across some MFB, because, I mean, the kicks, you know, and the drums, yeah. I mean, they're just absolutely classic, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, totally, totally. In fact, my first solo album that I did, when I first got into Eurorack, and I did my first album just using Eurorack, was with the MFB Triple Oscillator. Um, it's the OSC-02 triple right. oscillator and you get three oscillators in it with three outputs three cv in so they're all independent um I you've got square one wave you, oh, is it the one you've got <laughs> and and you've got octave switches on them um and yeah they just sound really really good across the entire range and you can switch between square wave triangle sort of there's even pulse with modulation on there by the way nick which you'll be pretty happy about i'm sure I, of course and um <laughs> and uh yeah i love that um sadly i don't have it anymore um but it was three oscillators in such a small hp um it's super powerful super clean sounding as well and it paired really well with with many different filters that i was using at the time is that the one you've got you add no i've got the crafts Crafts work. Ah, okay. Crafts yeah, okay. And yeah, and then um, I'm familiar with the, the kick drums as well and that kind of thing. I don't have any of them. I don't tend to do percussion and kicks and stuff in Eurorack. I, I'm quite particular about drums and how they sound, so I tend to do a lot of designing that inside the box and sample it out into the bit box and run it, run it from here. Because um, for, me, for me, drums really make... A big difference in a track. I think you can have as many oscillators as you want, but ultimately they're just kind of droning along for me. Really, it's about kicks and percussion, and I like to glitch them and use weird effects and have a bit of fun just making sound right, generate so you, percussion. You, so, 
You've yeah, it's why I've never really gone for individual like right. drum modules, if you like. Sure. I know some people swear by, you know, specific uh, drum kicks, but I mean, you know, the legacy of these two guys, you know, is really, I, I think probably Manfred Fricker has been, you know, I, I'm sure uh, Zinoviev will be, you know, uh, he's got a much sort of longer lasting legacy because he was, uh, he was one of the early, earliest people that did certainly in the UK. So, but uh, sad news, but have yeah. you got any MFB stuff? I mean, you must have something somewhere. Kick, Mr. No, Kickmeister. Um, I have a Joe Mox mod bass kick button. Ah, I nearly still bought. I nearly, yeah, I nearly bought. It was a choice between those. And then there's a techno artist called Surgeon who said, I've got the Joe Mox. So I thought, well, it's good enough. There. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give that a go. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, we're so lucky to have these often eccentric but amazing pioneers way back. You've just you've got to imagine that there was far less communication. These guys were generally working on their own. So you couldn't pop off emails and have a good chat in a forum about, you know, what you're up to across the world. Yeah. There was very little in the way of documentation or information um, about. So you were you're right there on your own with a bag of components and an idea trying to produce this stuff, which didn't even exist. You know, you're talking about a synthesizer, which is just a concept just doesn't happen and now we take it all for granted and and you know we can go and buy our teensies and get our digital audio and our cvs <laughs> and gates and and everything and and you forget that back then you know i mean when i first started programming i had to go to the library imagine that imagine going to the library to buy a book on yeah book you mean i have to <laughs> wait until i can get the bus because there's no buses today <laughs> yeah, exactly. on the sunday i'm gonna have to wait till monday <laughs> exactly what um <laughs> you know and and these guys this this uh the, the, enough here. Like, my, my musical history is terrible as well i should really know more about these people before they sadly pass away because i knew the names but i didn't know what they'd done particularly what they were famous for and that's really kind of disgusting to be on a show like this talking about people that have obviously made a big impact on the on the industry and and world that i kind of live in and not had the chance to pay my proper respects whilst they've been with yeah. us and i'm sure that i'm sure i'm not the only one to be honest everyone well said jumps on the on the kind of um yeah, no, bandwagon well of that but um but yeah, he made the he made the synth, he didn't he, Zafiev, and also the v, VCS three. Yeah, and I read DKS. somewhere I could be I could be wrong, but the VCS three or the synth, one of them, probably the more successful one, which was a synth, he was never really intended to be his kind of really successful one. It was almost an experiment, and he spent a lot of his life building other stuff, which was never quite successful. Um, I, I must dig out the article because it was very interesting. It was like he was he had his dream wasn't actually to build that. It was almost like a, a slight offshoot. Um, but yeah, reading about what these guys have done and not really being aware of them at the time is is, is astonishing, really. And I must I did must learn more about this stuff. Did you see the, uh, I think it was Tomorrow's World that did a documentary and they, were, they went down to his little shed, I yeah, say the little river, shed, yes. at, by yes. the river I at, at the end, in Putney. Yeah. And, I mean, talk yeah. about, you know, um, also doffing our caps to like the original shed worker, you know, the, the guy down at the end of the garden with his own studio and his... I'm off down there now, you know, to, to yeah. geek out, to <laughs> oh, do my music. He's doing his something. electronic stuff again. <laughs> yeah, he's down there doing his electronic stuff. Shall I take him a cup of tea? You know, that's, you know so um, I think that's awesome. I'd love to I, – I, I think we should all, like, uh, try and find that house and buy it and turn that shed into a museum or something or, yeah. or rent it out as a, as a music studio, fit it out with some stuff and, uh, I don't know, something crazy well, like there, that. There was, yeah, there was, what's interesting, there was a, a piece uh, – I remember seeing an interview with him. I can't remember who did it now, but uh, – he was, yeah, I, I watched it. I was like, oh, Peter's an OVS. And he just sort of said, oh, yeah, well, I'm doing some music. And I, no, I don't want any synthesizer. I'm just, it's all in the box. I can put it on a hard drive. I don't need to bother with any of that stuff. <laughs> but I mean, he was very much into computer music at the time. You know, he created digital sequencers, all sorts of stuff, all sorts of crazy stuff, you know, that was very ahead of its time. You know, but it's, yeah, I mean, that's just often the way it goes. Sometimes you, people go, pe the, the early work that people do is not, not totally recognized because it's not quite mainstream enough for everybody to get their heads around and we're not ready well, for it you know i just i just admire that there was some there's people like him in the world and you see this across all of the arts who you just know that they've got something inside them that they that they need to create they need to find it out they i need to build something because there's something going on in my head it's either a sound it's a picture it, it's a way of creating that doesn't exist yet and i'm and they're excited by it and then they devote hours and years to doing it and um 
I just love the Thank fact goodness. that there's people like this on the in the world. Yeah, so 100%, that again, 100%. Thank goodness. Yeah, I mean. That's... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, anyway, they you know lost a great loss of two great characters, um, and uh, you know our condolences to all their friends and family and anybody else who's affected by this. I mean, there's a lot of it about at the moment. I mean, we're just getting to that generation of the early pioneers in this are getting to an age where this kind of stuff happens and it's it's just it's sad but it's also um gives us a chance to reflect a little bit and maybe you know uh, i think uh, jean um uh, manfred's son is still continuing with mfb it's not going away you know so they'll still be able to build stuff and uh, you know there, there will be products out there you know hopefully they'll see a massive surge in sales and uh, and everybody will kind of be digging the mfb way um I think we've probably reached the end of uh, what's what's applicable today. I, mean, I know there were a couple, there was one or two other things, but uh, I think we'll save that. We never know. When, as we get to summer, we end up with uh, very few topics. I'll keep a couple in the bank uh, for when there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> so uh, if that's all right with everybody, I hope nobody was uh, chomping at the bit to talk about any of those specific ones. But uh, I want to say thank you very much to all our friends over in the chats, in the YouTubes and in the IRC and in the Discord and everywhere. Thank you so much for all of your support and, you know, listening and watching remember you can watch us everywhere if you like what you see don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell you'll get notifications and if you uh, want to see some stuff other stuff exclusive stuff as, as i said you can head over to patreon uh dot com slash sonic state and there's stuff i'll be putting this show up there with the pre-show and all of the ads removed so Matt, thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, you've got your new, new single fun. out, which is uh, going to be... Uh, yeah. That's, it's, that's uh, yeah, today. it's available on... Yeah, the way that I'm doing it, by the way, uh, um, is it comes out on Bandcamp first, and then a couple of months later it goes on the, the streaming platform. So I'm trying to steer people to my Bandcamp and create that as a little hub. In fact, I'm uh, just working on a sample pack that I'm going to release via Bandcamp as well of just um, weird weird stuff and sound design -y stuff that I'm going to put on there. So we'll finish all that off this week and hopefully get that up there um, soon as well. But Excellent. Um, thanks for having us back on the show. Thanks you're everyone welcome. who supported me on, on the song today as well. Yes. Well, no, you're absolutely welcome. Lovely to have you, Matt. And of course, uh, Mr. Dom Hawken, uh, don't forget, we've got uh, Mr. Wiggly's incinerator plugin, which is of course, uh, also something that some product that you can get um, from from indeed our, our it's weirdly the, um, there we go introducing the incinerator which is you um you, on yo ads uh how did i make this track i think you cut it just at the end before he said and of course i put incinerator on everything <laughs> after that. on every track of course but yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> but no thank you very much it's been a real real pleasure and um please do go and check out yo ads um sonic state 001 video and frederico vindver go just google frederico. sonic state frederico vindver these two videos neither of which require you to be on patreon but you should be exactly. on the patreon anyway but both of those are literally um I, i'd go as far as say solid life-changing solid they are they're incredible so yeah. those two videos will will explain how to make hit mixes of brilliant but thank you very much indeed it's, uh, you're welcome it's glad uh, to be here that's you're always welcome and thank you very much uh, and also yoad thank you for joining us too i know you're busy um you have to get back to your uh, modified synthesizers and mixes and working at waves all of that good stuff what uh, have you got many big projects on the go or is it sort of nice and uh, varied i have uh I have one big project and I have um, a lot of mixing coming in, mixes coming in. And at, at Waves, there's always huge projects. I don't know how, how we manage to do that. Um, but there's always like big challenges and things. And it's really, it's interesting and exciting and uh, challenging. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, that was Sonic Talk uh, 675. Uh, we will see you all. Oh, I forgot to say, I'm using the U Heil PR40. It gives me a bit more kind of body. I, did, I, I might have said that in the pre show. Anyway, see you all next time. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>